Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie, and today we're at one of my favorite places on the planet, Sedona, Arizona. Right in front of... Bell Rock. Yeah, as long as that fly would get out of my face. <laughs> Sundown. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful time to hike, terrible time for bugs. Yeah. There are plenty of hotels in Sedona and Village of Oak Creek, but not a lot of options for RV camping with a big rig like Rosie. However, in nearby Camp Verde and Cottonwood, there are plenty. Our preference is always public parks over private owned RV parks if they're available, and we were fortunate to grab a spot in Dead Horse Ranch State Park that's located in Cottonwood. As expected, spots are widely spaced and blend into the natural surroundings as much as possible. Cottonwood can be very hot from April through October, and as we were there at the end of September, we appreciated the hookups for water and electric. We'll tell you more about this Arizona State Park on our next episode. Today, we're headed to Sedona for a sunset hike around Bell Rock Butte. Hey guys, we are back in one of our most favorite places, in the My whole world. My favorite place on the planet, Sedona. So we just came over to try and get a little sunset hike in here at Bell Rock before it's too dark. And uh, everything's new here right now. They've redone so much. We're just kind of trying to figure out how to get to the trails, but they do have these fee stations right here. But our National Forest Pass, our America the Beautiful Pass works here. So we just put that up and we better get going, huh? Right. All right. Sedona, Arizona is located in a fairly small area and heavy traffic seems to be all over the place nowadays as more and more people put it on their bucket list right up there with the Grand Canyon. And that's well deserved. There's not many places as majestic as this Red Rock Country. Parking is a big issue at busy times everywhere in Sedona and especially at busy trailheads. Many parking lots have been enlarged if it was possible, but Sedona came up with a couple of new options. One is the Verde Shuttle, linking Cottonwood to Sedona. For a very affordable rate, you can catch a ride to many stops throughout Sedona and the village of Oak Creek. And just last year, they introduced the Sedona Shuttle. It's free transportation from two park and ride lots to four different areas, each with several great trails. And the best part, parking and riding the shuttle is free. During the busiest days from Thursday through Sunday year round, you can park and catch the shuttle to your chosen trailheads. And incredibly, you can even bring your dog, but there are some strict rules about that and we've provided some links in the description below with all the details, including maps and hours of operation. So we're at Bell Rock. There's Bell Rock Path goes all the way around the front side along the highway. You can climb up the rocks. I will show you some shots of people that are way up there right now and it's gonna be dark before they get down. So that is Bell Rock. This is a nice, easy trail for the most part. And um, the only negative is you're right by the highway and it's a very busy highway these days. So we do hear the car sounds probably the whole time we're here. Part of the appeal of Sedona is this signature red rock. The coloring is due to a thin layer of iron oxide and the red is caused by the weathering. It's amazing to see in person. The pictures really don't do it justice. 
There are several different paths along and up Bell Rock and two parking lots on opposite sides of the butte, making it easy to get off of the trail you planned. Even though there are markers all over, most just say trail with an arrow. The area is fairly open and easy to navigate. The wide open design of these trails allows visitors to spread out. If you want easy, stick to the flat area leading around the base of this butte. But it's hard to not want to go up the solid rock. There's markers there to keep you from dead ends. And because it's solid, it's not slippery, at least with proper shoes. So that's what we just came at through that crevice. We went off the easy trail, obviously. But since you're here at sunset, might as well go for it. Right, Dexter? It's just so inspiring once you're here. It's like, you know, we thought we'd just walk around the easy trail, but as soon as you're here, you're like, I want to go up there. I want to see this. I want to see that. The geology is what makes Sedona so unique and beautiful, but it's also regarded as a sacred place for many people. Bell Rock is known as one of four vortexes in this area. A vortex is considered a center of energy that's conducive for healing, meditation, and self-exploration. It was ground zero for thousands who came here in 1987 for the Harmonic Convergence, an event that drew believers to mystical places around the globe. There were some who gathered on or near Bell Rock who expected its top to slide open and spaceships to fly out. Now that didn't happen, but many of the believers never left. Metaphysics is a big business here these days, along with a lot of other theologies. Whether you're a believer or not, it's obvious that this beautiful place brings many of us inner peace. And for us, there's a feeling of attachment to the earth and skies above like few other spots on Earth. So we ended up climbing up pretty far. We're not gonna go much further because it's getting dark. I don't think people think about how they're going to get down and we certainly don't have a flashlight. So we're going to go back down so we can finish going all the way around Bell Rock so we can see it from all angles at sunset. So I woke up this morning and did a little bit of work and then we went for a hike down by the lagoon where we're camping and then this afternoon we came over here and hiked in Sedona and that's the beauty of this lifestyle. You get to choose your day and do what you want to do, see beautiful places like this. That's a trade off for having a job where you're trying to make as much money as you can and buy stuff. <laughs> well, it looks like we timed it out just right. The sun is set. A few pink clouds. Just enough time to get back to the car.
Many of Sedona's homesteaders are buried in Cook's Glade Cemetery. The first burial occurred here in 1918 with victims from the Spanish flu. So we decided to check out the burial site for many of them. In 1928, Henry Cook homesteaded 160 acres here, and that included this graveyard. In 1930, he fenced off the cemetery, and it's been in active use ever since. The Cook family deeded it to the Sedona Historical Society in 2005, and burials are still happening here, but they're limited to those related to the early residents of Sedona. But the big draw is that it's the final resting place for the town's namesake, Sedona Schneebly, who was born in 1877 in Missouri. And like many children today, her mother made up the name Sedona. Those close to her knew her as Dona. Sedona and her husband, T.C. Schneebly, are both buried here along with their daughter, Pearl, who sadly passed away at the age of five. Hey Roamers, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share it with your friends and family. And if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put up a new video. And make sure to leave a comment, that way you <laughs> could be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see ya. We hope you enjoyed Roaming with Rosie today. For more information on the places featured in this episode, check out the links in the video description, as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya.